My first memory of feeling fat was in middle school. I had recently started rehearsals for the school performance of the pajama game and was excited to hone my acting skills as factory girl number five. The costume mistress came to one of our drama club meetings and asked for our sizes so that she could begin making our costumes. Girl after girl gave their size to the costume mistress. They all wore single digit sizes. I did not. When the costume mistress got to me, I was so embarrassed that I had to go into the hallway to tell her what size I wore. From that point forward, I was acutely aware of my body. In high school, I developed a binge eating disorder. It began as sneaking bags of chips into my room, but turned into full-blown binging episodes almost every night that included family-sized boxes of crackers, cookies, and anything else I could get my hands on. I ate all of it, night after night. Honestly, I was disgusted with myself. I can't tell you how many times I cried myself to sleep because I felt so helpless. It seemed like no one else was struggling with food. I felt so out of control of my life. I didn't breathe the word about my struggles to anyone, and although I was happy to pray about everything else in my experience, I was pretty sure my issues with food and body image were irredeemable. I was so wrong. The healing was gradual, but in the end, it was complete. First, I had to recognize that I could be healed, not an easy feat. My struggles with my weight and body image permeated every aspect of my experience. I knew I could expect to find healing if I wasn't feeling well, but my body image issues were deeply rooted and long-standing. It just felt like too big of a problem to heal. In reality, I was having something of an identity crisis. You see, I had accepted the material idea that my identity came from my body. I began to see changes in my experience when I prayed to find a deeper understanding of my spiritual, unchanging identity as an expression of God. It all started my freshman year of college. There I was, nervous, nerdy as all heck, and excited to begin a new chapter in my life. I was also incredibly insecure. No matter what the problem I experienced was, whether a friend didn't ask me to hang out or I got a B on a test, I always blamed it on my body. I used to think, if only I weren't so fat, I would insert action here. At this point, I knew something had to change. I knew that my identity was spiritual and that I was worthy of love and affection. I also knew that I needed to fundamentally change how I was identifying myself. So I began breaking down the material, limited identity I'd created for myself. It started with a run. Up until this point, I had hated running with a passion, but I laced up my torn up tennis shoes and blasted some One Direction in my earphones, determined to run until I loved it. I only ran about half a mile before I needed to stop, but I had never felt more accomplished in my life. Soon enough, AKA three months of steady progress later, I was running to Elliston four to five times a week without wanting to die. My runs quickly became my favorite time to pray. I began to see evidence of this year's metaphysical theme, behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in my own experience. You see, I had subconsciously decided that I would only be a child of God when I was finally satisfied with the number on the scale. But God was gently reminding me that my identity was spiritual. Running became a vehicle for a major shift in my consciousness. As I ran, I was reminded that I was strong, beautiful, and intelligent. I didn't need to search for validation from other people because I could be satisfied knowing that I was already in the kingdom of God. When I crossed the line of my first half marathon last spring, I cried tears of gratitude because I knew that each step had been supported by principle and propelled forward by spirit. If you told me that running over 10 miles would make me happy my freshman year of college, I wouldn't have believed you, but God has a funny way of revealing our desires to us. One of my all-time favorite Bible verses is from Psalms. It says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. As I turned to God for guidance, this verse hit me with the force of a freight train. It was like God was trying to say, see, you are already wonderfully made. You don't have to wait. I recognized that all of my issues were connected to a warped self-identity. 
I was identifying myself with my body, with matter, both of which are completely opposed to spirit or God. I had allowed myself to be completely mesmerized by the world's obsession with the body. I saw progress and I experienced moments of clarity along the way, but the pinnacle of my healing happened last summer. I had just returned home from a mentally exhausting semester and was feeling discouraged about a lot of things in my life. It seemed like I was slipping back into bad habits and I found myself struggling with body image more than ever. While visiting the Christian Science Church in Concord, New Hampshire, I saw this quote from Isaiah written on a small postcard. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. I remember looking at that postcard and feeling like a physical weight had been lifted from my shoulders. I had been holding on to so much material baggage that just wasn't mine to hold on to. A few weeks later, I realized that I had been completely healed of my binge eating disorder. Now, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm satisfied. Am I a supermodel? No. But my worth and value come directly from God, who thinks I'm the most precious jewel, the most amazing woman, and the most needed expression of his love. Our society is body obsessed, and I think most of us are yearning for something more. What would happen if we became spirit obsessed, if we recognized the kingdom of God within each of us? Healing. <laughs>